The committee will come to order. The Oversight Committee's mission statement is that we exist to secure two fundamental principles. First, Americans have a right to know that the money Washington takes from them is well spent. And second, Americans deserve an efficient, effective government that works for them. Our duty on the Oversight and Government Reform Committee is to protect these rights. Our solemn obligation is to hold government accountable to taxpayers, because taxpayers have a right to know what they get from their government. It is our job to work tirelessly in partnership with citizen watchdogs to deliver the facts to the American people and bring genuine reform to the Federal bureaucracy. A few days ago, the acting IRS Commissioner, Danny Wilfel, issued a 30-day assessment on his plan of action for the future of the IRS. The report stated that in many instances across the IRS, we had efficient, effective management or effective management that is leading positive organizational performance. Unfortunately, we are here today because failures within the IRS are not isolated to just tax-exempt division. The revelation that, that a company called Strongcastle was able to acquire more than $500 million in potential contracts or in contracts for potential sales with no previous track record completely undermines the IRS narrative that just one branch or department within the IRS failed the American people. Our report, we believe, shows a cozy relationship between Strong Castle's president and the IRS Deputy Director for Information Technology Acquisitions, Greg, Greg Roseman. And it is the heart of this issue. Included in, the, uh, <coughs> included in our report are exchanges of text messages that we believe are shockingly inappropriate and in some cases offensive. Furthermore, the fact that Mr. Castillo was able to successfully manipulate the system, and we are not alleging a crime, but successfully manipulate the, quest, the uh, system to acquire contracts exposes staggering vulnerability in the IRS's acquisition process and jeopardize, jeopardizes billions of taxpayer dollars at, uh, <coughs> uh, in this situation. Quite frankly, we are not sure that we have criminal element here, that we have criminal violations. What we are sure of is that the intent of Congress and the stated intent of this and each administration before has been thwarted. The intention of, without a doubt, that disabled military veterans receive preference flies in the face of a small injury in 1984 while attending the Military Academy prep school, one so minor that it had no effect on college football participation for years to follow and that took 27 years to conveniently ask to have this put in as a disability, not because of the true disability or inability to perform a job, but in fact in order to qualify for a preference statement. Additionally, the use of hub zones, and in this case one that was a legacy hub zone that actually the Verizon Center and the other parts of, of Washington, D.C are moving out of that into thriving areas, the use of that <clears throat> in order to gain a, uh, a contract and then creating absolutely no jobs within that district that were directly related to uh, or in support of this $500 million contract. Our investigation is still in its infancy. Today <clears throat> we are working with the IG and hope to work with others within the IRS to end this problem. As we speak, many of these contracts continue to be in force. And perhaps that is the most distressing, is that the IRS officials immediately, uh, <coughs> excuse me, initially denied and then repeated their denial that there was a problem. They failed to take action after this was brought to their attention, and the IRS is still allowing a $266 million contract with Strong Castle to stand. 
<clears throat> the action by the Inspector General when he was notified of these allegations almost a year ago was a lack of urgency that the American taxpayers deserve. In our evaluation, we find no value added performed by Strongcastle. I repeat, no value added performed by Strongcastle, although profits flow to that company over and above the full payment to the companies who actually provide the IRS with those services. No hearing related to the IRS would be complete without mentioning that under Obamacare, the task of the IRS to implement at least 47 new provisions, including 18 new taxes, uh, expected to raise $1 trillion over the next decade, and the hiring of thousands of new employees, the need for computer systems to work and work accurately, begs the question of can we afford to implement Obamacare if we cannot get the systems and controls in place for existing uh, requirements. Just this year, the IRS has requested nearly $500 million, the same amount of money the IRS plans to award to Strongcastle to enforce Obamacare, including 2,000 new full-time employees. We are not trying to say that one is interchangeable with the other, but it is very clear this is a lot of money, and it is a lot of money that could, for a fraction, 2 or 3 or 4 percent savings, be passed on to the American people. <clears throat> Often on this dais, we applaud appropriately Federal workers. And I want to take a moment to make it clear, the vast majority of people involved in contracting in the Federal workforce take contracting seriously. They scrutinize the contracts and, most often, try to get the best value for the taxpayer. Because the best value is not always the lowest price, this is a difficult job and it requires absolute integrity. If we do not have full confidence in our procurement integrity, then we must choose the lowest price. The lowest price is not always the best value for the taxpayer. But the analytics of lowest price versus lowest value depends on an independent, non-cozy relationship between the contracting officers and their superiors and the contractor. This committee has over the years applauded and will continue to applaud that most contracts have that characteristic. They are not always awarded the way contractors would like, but they are based on best value to the taxpayer. In this case, at least for this chair and our uh, draft report, we don't believe that occurred, and that is the reason that we are continuing our investigation. I now like to recognize and thank the Ranking Member for being my full partner in this investigation.